G'day everyone, welcome to Brushes with Beck. Today's video is another time lapse of a coloured pencil piece. Today I am working on Fabriano Artistico hot pressed watercolour paper. This is my very first time using this paper. I am using both Faber Castell Polychromos and the Derwent Drawing Pencils. Now I don't use very much of the Derwent Drawing Pencils, the main part is in this very first ear. But for whatever reason, I found that I didn't really like them on this paper. I found it difficult to lay over them with the Polychromos pencils. And whether that's just my limited experience with wax-based pencils or a factor of this Fabriano Artistico paper itself, I'm not 100% sure, but I wasn't a big fan of the result. So I basically stopped using the Derwent drawing pencils for the rest of the piece. So obviously I am starting on this ear on the left hand side and I'm working down the left hand side of my piece to avoid putting my hand over areas that I've already worked and having to cover that up. So my process for this piece is really just laying in base colours and blending them out with a cotton bud and then as I've laid in enough colour then going over again and adding in the fur detail and the many, many, many pencil strokes required to make that fur texture. So it's a very slow process and this piece did actually take me over 10 hours and it's condensed down into, you know, just over 10 minutes or so. So there's a massive reduction in time and it's really hard to appreciate just sort of how long this sort of thing takes. Now I do quickly just want to apologize for the flickering that you see on the screen every now and then in this first few minutes of video. That is simply an artifact of the fact that, well I've realized that when I have it zoomed in too close and then I speed it up a lot, that's when I get that flickering. But if I'm zoomed out a little bit more when I speed it up I don't get that flickering. So. Like I said, a few minutes in, that corrects itself because I have the camera more zoomed out. Although it's good to have it zoomed in for really close up work like on this eye detail here, which I think it's great for you guys to see, I found that moving throughout the piece, I realized that it was sort of, as I did different areas, it might have been a bit harder for you to see exactly what I was working on because it seems a bit disjointed when it's just small portions of the entire image. So this piece that I'm working on is A4 size. As I said, it's Fabriano Artistico and I'll have to use the paper more before I decide how much I like it because if you may have noticed in this area here where I laid in some greys, it was a little bit blotchy and I'm not sure whether that's a result of my technique using the dry blending with the cotton buds making it a little bit blotchy or whether that's the paper itself. I did have that issue a little bit throughout the piece as I laid in more colour and layers. Sometimes it didn't even need that many layers before it got a little bit blotchy but that was a one little concern of mine and I'm like I said I'm not sure whether it's my technique or whether it's this paper and I'm just not used to using it but it's certainly something I need to explore more the next time that I use this paper. This section here is what I mentioned before about it seeming disjointed when I'm zooming in too far. This is the bottom left of the piece you're seeing what I'm working on right there is her front leg and behind that is the arch of her back. Same process as before on the face laying in some base colors building up that colour, building up that colour before going in with the detail for the fur. Now while working on this piece, my technique did develop a lot. This is my, really my first proper portrait piece. I have done, you know, countless cat drawings and wildlife drawings in the past, but never something, you know, this close up on the face and with this much detail. So this is quite a good experience for me and I found that 
as I moved through the piece, my technique did actually change a little bit. And so I found that once I made my way through the piece, that the one side looked a little bit different to the other side. So I had to go back through and sort of refine the initial side to sort of tie it in together with the, with the side I'd done second. And that's fine. It means that I developed and learned as an artist along the way. And I actually really like how this turned out. And I really, really like how I improved through the piece. And the fact that I could see my own improvement was a really big deal to me. And I feel like, you know, when you're working on a piece like this and it's taking, you know, 10 hours to complete this, you know, that's a really big deal. And if you're not learning something along the way, there's probably something wrong. So just all that time, not only spent drawing, but looking at my reference and learning how to translate that reference photo into colored pencil, working out how I need to layer those pencils to get the result I want, you know, to get my picture looking like my photograph. So that's just something that I got better at along the way as I worked through this piece. Now, just to tell you a little bit more about this cat, this cat that I'm drawing is actually one of my cats. Her name is Jasper. She is just over two years old and she is a Somali cat. They're not a terribly well-known breed, but they are very, very beautiful. We also have Jasper's older sister, Jasiri. She is just over three years old. You will have seen her in some of my other videos if you've watched my videos. Jasiri is the one that's always walking across my artwork. She's the one that's gray in color. So like I said, they are sisters. Jasper is a tawny Somali, which is also known as ruddy in some countries. And Jasiri is a blue Somali. They are kooky and clever, very energetic cats. Jasiri, I think, is the intelligent one. Sorry, Jasper. And Jasper is the... She wears her heart on her sleeve and her sleeve says food. So she's very obvious in her intentions. And if she wants something, guarantee you 90% of the time it's food that she wants. Not that she's underfed, it's just that that's what she wants. And I need to pause this video because Jasiri wants ruffles. Like I said before, you might be able to see how I said that the two sides of the picture didn't marry up quite well as I worked through. And you can see developing on that right hand side the warmer tones. It's a little bit more yellow, a bit more orange. And the left hand side is a bit more reddy brown. And that's simply my technique has changed as I've worked through the image because I am learning as I'm going. I'm developing better working out how to achieve the result that I want, which is why my technique has changed and the colors slightly altered because I'm seeing things a bit differently. I'm learning what to look for more. I'm seeing different things than I was before. So I have to work through the other side of this piece, work in some of those warmer colors to tie it all back in together. But you can see that working on that fur through the the side of the neck there, that my technique has improved. It looks a bit more realistic, less clumpy, but more natural. Whereas before the clumpiness was a bit, it didn't really make much sense. It was just kind of there. So back to working on the face and really putting in the detail of the face and making it look 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 like a cat, I suppose. That's what this the goal is of this piece. This was a really long process working on the face, making sure I got all the the shadows in the correct places, the direction of the fur going the correct direction, because on a cat's face, the fur direction changes so much. It's sort of, you know, you've got to pay real close attention to where that fur is turning, what it's going towards, when it's turning away from those areas, 
because it does change a lot and paying close attention to that fur direction can make a huge difference to how real something looks. And the fur on her nose is so short that it was almost little circles rather than little dashes because that was the only way to make it. Um, that was Jasiri crossing my page. Like I said before, she has to be involved in the videos. She's the one that's always around. Jasper just tends to be sleeping on the bed. So I spent a lot of time working through the face. I'm adding blues in the top of the head there because she has a black marking across the top of her head. And in the shadow and in highlights, that is showing some blue. So that's a really good way to add depth into blacks, is to add blue in. So like I said, paying really close attention to those details on the face. Working out where the shifts in colour are, because there is a lot of different colour tones, even just across the bridge of her nose. And I spent a long time working through this, making sure it was close to the reference. Because if you're doing a pet portrait, it really needs to be as accurate as possible. Because if that portrait doesn't look accurate to that owner, it's not going to be quite... It's not really going to make them happy. Especially they are going to be the ones that can tell most easily if this resembles their pet or not, or whether something's wrong because you haven't followed the reference closely enough because they see that animal every single day. So it has to be right. And the details have to be really accurate. If you're doing a portrait like this, obviously if your style is more loose and I don't know, arty, I want to say, but I mean like impressionistic or more stylized where you're using bold colors and you're not focusing on detail, then it really doesn't matter as much. But when you're doing a piece like this where it's meant to be a realistic pet portrait, then it does need to be very, very accurate. And so that's why I've spent so much time on the face, making sure each change in fur colour is accurate and her whisker spots are accurate. The fur on her chest, the colour of that is important, but because it's all the same colour, the details aren't as important. As long as I get sort of the fluffiness factor right, I'll call it. That doesn't matter so much because there's no patterning there. But anytime you've got a pattern or change in fur colour or, you know, a fur length, that's the, the really important things to focus on to make sure it looks accurate to somebody's pet. So as you can see, I've nearly finished working through the face there. And... I'm not sure if it's obvious, it's obvious to me because I was working on the piece that the right hand side of this piece, which is, you know, Jasper's left hand side was actually lit up by light and her right hand side was in shadow. So that's why the one side of my piece is darker than the other, because it's meant to be illustrating that, you know, that light coming from the one side. And to me, it makes sense in the final piece, but to somebody else it may not. And it may look not quite right. So I'm not sure if I've got the the values of those shadows on her face right, but I'm still very, very pleased with the result. So as you can see, I'm working on her other ear here, and it's much more pale than the ear on the other side. The details are more of her light fur inside her ears is softer because you know, the light's hitting it all, whereas on the other side, the inside of her ear is in very deep shadow and those white fur, those white hairs inside her ear stand out a lot more. But on this ear, they don't. It's much more, it's much softer. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm going through this chest fur and adding in some warmer tones on the one side to tie it in with the right hand side, just to make sure that all looks like it's one cohesive piece because it didn't so much before. And like I mentioned before, darkening up those shadows a bit and just refining any details that I can see that need refining before I call this finished piece. Now with the whiskers, I did actually emboss them before I started, but it didn't quite work out whether I didn't do it hard enough or it wasn't, you know, a wide enough embossed crevice. It didn't quite work out. So I went 
and used a very sharp pencil to get my pencil inside those embossed lines to bring out those whiskers. And that worked okay because I was able to get some white pigment into those lines and bring out her whiskers a little bit. So there you have the finished piece. I do hope you like it. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please click on the notification button so you'll get notified anytime I upload a new video. I do upload every single week. Just before I say goodbye on this video, I just wanted to say a huge, huge thank you to every single one of my subscribers. Thank you so much. I have reached 100 subscribers, which is a really big milestone for me and for this channel. And that's all thanks to you guys. Thank you to anyone who isn't subscribed but maybe commenting or liking my videos. I really do appreciate that too. And here's hoping we reach another milestone soon. So once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and stay creative.